The next thing that I wanted to discuss, and this is really the most important thing because it's the thing that physicians of all ages often find difficult, and that is dealing with hopelessness, end-of-life care, and the actual death of a patient. This is something, again, that there's a dichotomy. You can either choose to be good at it or you can kind of choose to pass it off on others. So with, the, with this concept in mind that you have a very dichotomous choice on how you're going to handle this, my suggestion is, is that you dive right in. You get used to the, the concept that taking care of patients and taking care of the elderly particularly, and unfortunately taking care of certain pediatric patients is going to mean dealing with death and hopelessness, end of life, families that are quite overcome with the process and need help. Now again, as a student, you have to be careful. You can't be making promises and you can't be, you, you're part of the care team. But that doesn't mean that you can't be there, that you can't dive into the, to the care being offered. So that if you know that there's going to be an end of life discussion, if you know that there's an MRI that showed that the cancer was much more widespread than thought before, a patient is being worked up for a pancreatic cancer, might they have a curative Whipple surgery? And yet you know that, they're, that the attending and the resident are going to have to go in and say that this is a hopeless case, that it's wide, widespread metastatic disease to the liver, don't opt out. You don't have to talk, you don't have to interact, but you can certainly go and show your support. And this is, this is the best way you're going to learn. One of the students last year asked me, what do you do if you feel like you're going to cry? And I said, you're going to feel like you're going to cry, and you're going to cry. Families are never going to be resentful. They're going to be touched in that regard. They're going to see that you're really on their side and you're really interested, again, in the continuity of care. You're not just stepping away because there's not something curative or therapeutic that you can accomplish. You can go to the patients who are having a particular rough time, particularly uh, ones that are, they've gotten bad news, or things are progressing badly. There are family members that have come in from out of town. Or, or you find out, you say, oh, so-and-so's son is coming in. He'll be arriving by plane and should be at the bedside by 5 p.m. One of the things that I found that endears you to families, and it's great practice because you won't find, in general, the hospitalist coming in. The resident is probably busy. At the end of the day, if you have situations like this, it's really nice to go in and see the family. Ask them if anything happened. Ask them if they had any questions. Say, I hear your son was coming in and I wanted to meet him. Those are the kind of things that really get you involved with the family and really give you the feel of, of medicine. And you can do it without you know, having the high-powered knowledge and knowing exactly what's going on and understanding, understanding the genetics of the cancer and how it affects the chemotherapy that's going to be offered. You're just, you're just learning how to relate to, the, to real patients with real abnormalities and real family members. And it's a very exciting opportunity that oftentimes people just say, well, it's not my job and I'm just going to go home. Now, last year I was part of a panel that talked about primary care. And I brought in, as I'd done a lot of geriatrics over the years, I brought in thank you notes. And pass them around. And the funny thing was is that over my years of practice, the most thank you notes I ever got were from families whose relative had passed away, ones that were in hospice. Um, I even keep my favorite note where the patient wrote me about a month after I had her go into hospice. And she wrote me and said, thank you for all your wonderful care. You were wrong. I made it. I didn't die, you know, and she took great pleasure. And, and I, you know, I kept the note forever because it, it, it showed me how serious this business was and how I had to weigh every word and learn to talk to people. And this is something, as a third year, that you can practice without really practicing medicine beyond your scope.